Welcome to episode number 235, where I'm speaking with Ayurvedic chef Divya Alter about how Ayurveda describes food through the five properties. Those five properties are the tastes, qualities, the metabolic effect, the post-digestive effect, and some foods that have that unique healing property. So please stay tuned. Welcome to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. I'm your host, Colette, and I hope to educate and empower you to take charge of your health and well-being, preventing disease in the body and mind so that you can thrive in life. I will be sharing the holistic teachings of Ayurveda, which is the ancient healing tradition from India. Now, if you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend listening to the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. And if you like the content, please be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so the new episodes will automatically download for you. Also, you may want to check out my private elements community, which is away from social media. It's a safe space for like-minded people to come together, to connect, to share, to support each other, and to continue the conversation from the podcast episodes. Check out the link in the show notes or visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com and just click on the community tab. And I hope to connect with you there. Thanks for listening. And now here is a new episode. This episode is sponsored by New World Ayurveda. If you're interested in working with client case studies from day one of your training, consider becoming an Ayurvedic practitioner through New World Ayurveda School. This way you learn the theory of Ayurveda at the same time as you learn how to apply it practically. Get a head start on working with clients by learning Ayurveda through being exposed to the most common problems clients face and how to correct them with diet, lifestyle and herbs. The other interesting thing about New World Ayurveda is that you start learning pulse diagnosis from the very first day. They have had the most experience teaching Ayurveda online than any other Ayurveda school, and they have developed ways of teaching pulse diagnosis at a distance. And you get the chance to study Ayurveda with an MD through Ayurveda's premier online school, New World Ayurveda. For more information, go to newworldayurveda.com, and you'll also find that link in the show notes. Hello and welcome back to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. Today I'm very happy to welcome back Divya Alter, who is a certified nutritional consultant, educator, and chef in the Shankya Vansia Ayurveda tradition. In 2016, Alter and her husband Prentice founded Divya's Kitchen, a plant-based restaurant in New York City that reimagines classic dishes through an Ayurvedic lens. Divya's brand has since expanded to include a line of plant-based retail food products and educational videos. Divya is also the co-founder of Bhagavat Life, a non-profit culinary school that offers cooking classes and an Ayurvedic chef certification program. Divya is the author of What to Eat for How You Feel, The New Ayurvedic Kitchen, and another new cookbook, which is on its way due to be published in September, which is called The Joy of Balance, an Ayurvedic Guide to Cooking with Healing Ingredients. Divya, welcome back to the show. And this is just announced this week, right? The name of the book. Yes, thank you, Colette. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to be back. And yes, we just revealed the cover and the title of my new cookbook. It, it, it came out really beautiful, and, and I hope it will, give you, it will give joy to all of you. Excellent. The cover is beautiful. I saw the uh, snapshot you gave on social media, and it looks really great. And I love that you're doing it in the perspective of with the healing ingredients, so people understanding how the ingredients they're using, the effect on the body, and so on, which is what we want to talk about today, right? Yeah, so Joy of Balance uh, is is organized to help you cook by ingredient. Mm -hmm. 
So we have chapters of different categories of ingredients like grains, lentils and beans, vegetables. And then, for example, in the gra grain section, I, I profile barley or millet or wheat or rice. So I profile different types of grains. And in the profile, I, I explain the properties of the grain the way the original Sanskrit text of Ayurveda described it. Um, and that's why I wanted to talk about the properties of food today, because it will help you understand the book, but it will also help you connect with food in a much personal way, in, in, on a deeper level, and help you connect the food with the way you feel. Exactly, and also be able to tailor it to your needs. Yes, exactly. It, it will help you really decide whether to prepare it and eat it or just leave it. It's like, it's good food, it's a good ingredient, for example, millet. It may be good for you uh, because it, it's a great, there's many different types of millets, but, that, but you know, it's rich in calcium and iron. <laughs> when you break it down to its components, it's very nutritious. But is it really good for you right now? because it's, it has a very drying effect on the body. Um, it also has a very scraping effect. So to decide whether it's good for you right now, you have to know these properties. Mm -hmm. So let's start, Divya, with what are the five properties? Yes, Ayurveda des um, describes food in five different categories. And the first is the category of the six tastes. So rasa, rasa in Sanskrit, and there are six tastes of food, and we've spoken before about them, mm -hmm. but basically the, the tastes are described as sweet, sour, salty, pungent, bitter, and astringent. Now, it's easy to memorize these tastes, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I know the six tastes, but it goes much deeper than that, so... Right. Sweet taste doesn't just mean like sugary things. Sweet has a sweet food, foods of sweet taste are very, are usually heavy and they're building foods. They help to build the bulk of our body tissues. Mm, right. It doesn't mean just gaining weight. It just, they help us build our tissues. So we have strong body and stamina. Um, they're very grounding foods. Yeah, and in Ayurveda, they say that the sweet taste is made up of the water and earth elements, right? Yes, which are the heaviest elements. Mm -hmm. So the most dense, yeah. Yeah, for example, so like ghee is a sweet taste, for example, or rice or almonds. Um, meat, N meat is a sweet taste. Most meats are sweet taste. So you don't, you wouldn't think of meat as something sweet, right? But it, right. This is what me, what it means to be heavy and building food. Of course, all the sugary things are also mm -hmm. sweet, sweet taste. And carbohydrates. Uh, yeah, like like carrots. <laughs> or potatoes are more astringent, though. So again, different different. I mean, different types of the same type of vegetable could have different effect. Like sweet potato is predominantly sweet taste. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we have the next taste is sour taste. And it's not just sour. Notice next time you eat something sour, sour, uh, foods with sour taste are very digestive foods. So if you ate something heavy and then you have like lemonade <laughs> or a little bit of, I don't know, lemon juice, even apple cider vinegar can help with that or some kind of sour fruit you will notice how the sourness breaks down the heaviness mm -hmm. in your body. You're experiencing the heaviness in your body. Eating something sour will break it down, will help you digest whatever you ate before so that you feel a little lighter. Right. And so the sour, if we're going looking at the elements of that, it's earth and fire. So it's yeah. that fire element that brings the transformation and the digestibility. Yes, yeah, and also sour taste enhances, um, it's a flavor, one of the flavor enhancers. So mm -hmm. 
you know, you make a dal, like a dal soup with, yes, let's say yellow split mung dal mm. and you cook it. It's perfectly seasoned and you taste it. And it's like, yeah, it's good. You add a little bit of lime juice to it as a garnish. Mm. The lime juice will make it even tastier. Mm, exactly. And so it's good to give people examples of the sour taste as well. So you have like lime or lemon, fermented foods. Yes, fermented foods. So anything that's fermented is predominantly sour taste. That includes cheese, like fermented cheeses. Mm, right. And then you have the vinegars. Yes, vinegars, um, pickles. So, yeah, the, and of course, unripe fruits. So you could have, let's say, take a strawberry. Mm. Strawberries, if it's, I mean, it's very hard for me to find really good strawberries in America. <laughs> But strawberries in America are predominantly sour. But if it's very, very ripe, then the predominant taste would be sweet. The same with the mango. We're in the mango season right now. So mm. imagine like um, an unripe, not fully ripened mango. And if you've been to a tropical country where, where mangoes grow and you're fortunate to try a mango that ripened on the tree and you literally like you drink it it's like nectar it's so soft and and ripe you just make a hole and you kind of massage it a little bit and then you drink it and that's the real mango so again the same the same fruit or vegetable could be sour or sweet depending on the ripeness yeah, that's a very good point that it can change the qualities can change depending on the ripeness and also depending on where it's grown Exactly. The yes. soil and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have the salty taste. So salt is a flavor. So foods of salty taste are flavor enhancing. And something very interesting about salt is that salt is hygroscopic. So it means that it pulls moisture out of the tissues. Mm. So you can notice this also, you know, when we cook zucchini and you don't want them to be too watery, mm -hmm. you sprinkle some salt on them and then they release a lot of the salt. I mean, they release a lot of their water. Mm -hmm. I do that when I make uh, stuffed zucchini boats. <laughs> right. And the same with aubergine or eggplant. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So so salt pull, pulls moisture out of the tissues. It mm -hmm. works with vegetables. It works the same way with, with the body. Mm -hmm. And so that's the action in the body. Um, that's why we don't recommend eating much salt when you have like, like a, you know, swelling or edema, like, like, because it's already built up of water and it will make it worse. Right. Yes. Um, and cause water retention. Water. Yeah. Water retention or, or it could be just anywhere. It could be just in your feet or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, so then you need to eat less salty food. So the salty category is less variety, of course. We have different types of salt uh, following this category. Ayurveda describes five different types of salt. Um, and then seaweed, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. the different types of seaweed, they're salty. A lot of people like to use like dulls or or kelp or combo instead of salt, mm -hmm. which is fine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I, I wouldn't use it all the time instead of salt, but it's fine to use it once in a while. Right. Yeah. And it has other properties that are beneficial in the seaweed as well, like iodine and, and so on. Yes. yes. And so the salt, just to give the elements here as we're, as we're doing, going along, it's made up of the water and fire elements. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so that, uh, Yes. So, and then depending on the different, so it's interesting because, I mean, we'll get back to the, to the taste because usually salt of the fire element increases heat in the body. So, mm -hmm. um, there's only one salt that doesn't do that. And that's called Sindhava. Sindhava is a rock salt, whitish color, comes from a very specific region in Pakistan. Uh, the Himalayan region of Pakistan. And it's like a whiter color rock salt. It's not the pink Himalayan rock mm -hmm. salt. So that's How do you spell it? Sorry. Sindhava. So, it, so 
it comes so it's, it comes from the region Sindh, where the the river Sindh is. So in Sanskrit, it turns into Sindhava. So it's S A I N D H A V A. I hope I spelled it right. <laughs> Along <laughs> those lines, <laughs> that's yeah. good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sindhava. So you can. I mean, I've seen a different company sell a different. So for example, the one that I use. I use Vitamishra Soma Salt. It's called Soma, S-O-M-A, mm-hmm. Soma Salt. And I like it because he, he purifies it for the small traces of heavy metals that are naturally found in that salt. And it's, it's really, it's amazing. It, does, it has a cooling effect. It doesn't have a heating effect on the body. And it's, it doesn't increase blood pressure also. Mm. Great. So that's the only salt that does that, and it's considered the best. Lava Nottama, the best of all salts. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that's know. the one that I use usually. Um, so, I mean, there are other companies that sell it as mineral salt. I just don't know if they purify it properly. So right. that's something to be asked of the company. Mm, good point. So the next taste is pungent. So pungent, I mean... Think about eating like a chili or something that's really, really spicy. It makes you sweat. So some of the pungent foods are stimulating, very stimulating foods. Mm -hmm. And it's the fire and air elements. Yeah, it's very, a lot of fire. Mm -hmm. So pungent foods, they're very stimulating. Um, they, They speed up metabolism. They expand the channels of the body right like anything that's hot expands yeah and they um they also make you sweat Mm -hmm. (laughs) speaking to a friend recently he's like yeah yeah when we eat a lot of spicy foods and and we just get used to the sweating (laughs) (laughs) um and pungent foods also has a lot of antimicrobial like Properties. That's why in a lot of tropical countries, people eat spicy foods, even though it's hot, mm. because it helps them ward off parasites and like pathogens. Yeah, it's literally burning things off. It's like a fire yes, between yes. the fire and air. It's like a, a fi- it's like a yeah a fire in the body. And so examples of the pungent are very intense flavors, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, different types of chili peppers, of course, onions and garlic. Um, no, um, ginger, ajwine seeds. Um, there are a lot, a lot of spices are pung- pungent. Like mm-hmm. fenugreek has pungency to it. Cinnamon, cloves. These are all pungent spices. Mm-hmm. Black pepper, of course. And so, some would have different levels on a scale. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, you cannot compare the pungency of a, of chili to the pungency of. Cinnamon, Cinnamon. Right. exactly. <laughs> so, so we're talking about predominant taste because each food would have like a subtaste mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. For example, fenugreek is bitter and pungent. So, pungent foods are are really good for increasing digestive fire, agni, and, and in in all tissues also. Uh, they're very good for breaking things down because of the air element. Pungent foods promote increase more lightness in the body, mm-hmm. um, but um, they're not good for pitta balancing. <laughs> no, it's one. It's definitely one for pitta to uh, limit. Yes, so, so you have to be careful with that with them because sometimes they go against what you what you need. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then, so bitter foods, bitter foods are cleansing foods. They are the air and space element. Mm-hmm. So that's vata. So bitter foods are more vata aggravating. <laughs> and um, bitter foods are cleansing foods. So anything that's bitter supports the liver, supports the cleansing of the blood, um, that will promote better skin. They pr- and also bitter foods promote lightness in the mm-hmm. body. Mm-hmm. So just like sweet, so bitter is the opposite of sweet, right? So yes. sweet taste are building heavy foods, and bitter taste are foods of very light and cleansing, like they break down tissues. Mm-hmm. 
So a lot of leafy greens of predominantly bitter taste, like kale or collards. Uh, broccoli rab is more bitter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then um, some types of spinach are predominantly bitter. Some dandelion are, is another one. Right? Oh, yeah, dandelion. My favorite is bitter melon. I just love the bitter melon. <laughs> it's very bitter. Yes. And so notice also... so. All these foods as tastes also have effect on the mind. So bitter foods promote mental alertness. And I think that's one reason people like coffee. Mm-hmm. It's not just the caffeine, it's the bitter taste of it that wakes you up. Right, exactly. Yeah, but it's they're also very drying foods. So that's why we don't recommend eating a lot of bitter, including coffee, drinking coffee, when you're constipated, for example, when there's a lot of dryness in your colon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, like, like you said, it's made up of the air and space elements. So it's similar elements to Vata. So it's increasing Vata. Therefore, it's not a good taste for those with a high Vata constitution or Vata aggravation. Right. Yeah. But you can, I mean, we need, so we need to have all six tastes on our mm-hmm. plate. This could mm-hmm. be just, you can just add a bitter taste by adding a spice. Exactly. Exactly. Like that. It's it's limited. It's not that it's, uh, it's yeah, not it's, elimination. It's not the main it's dish. Like yes. It's yeah. not the main dish. <laughs> it's a little side dish or just the spice. Exactly. And then, and then the last taste is astringent. And I love astringent foods. And there's so many foods that fall in the astringent category, but we don't think of them as astringent. So astringent foods are of the earth. And some classical texts say it's, earth and air and some say it's earth and space but in general astringent foods have the property of creating dryness so they dry up moisture in the body mm-hmm. they soak it up and dry it up unlike salty ta- salty taste which releases moisture from the tissues so, but then the moisture just sits there yes. and, and astringent foods they dry it up so they're usually lighter foods, a little heavy because of the um, air element. I mean, I mean, earth element, and the earth element is the secondary. So air or space is the first element, and plus, and then earth. So, for example, I mean, notice astringent foods usually will dry your mouth a little mm-hmm. bit. So, if you've eaten unripe banana, for example, exactly. or um, even worse, unripe persimmon. Ooh. Yeah. That all the moisture from your mouth is completely dried up. <laughs> yes, it kind of desensitizes yes. your mouth. Uh-huh. Or um or pomegranate, especially mm-hmm. the seeds of the pomegranate. Yeah. Um and then like some types of spinach, you know, when you eat the spinach and kind of dries your teeth on the back of your teeth. Mm-hmm. Um and then a, a lot of cruciferous vegetables are predominantly astringent, like cabbage, different types of cabbage, Brussels sprouts, um, broccoli, cauliflower, mm-hmm. and then a lot of beans yeah. and lentils are also astringent. Exactly. And turmeric is astringent as well, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the predominant taste of turmeric is bitter mm-hmm. and then pungent and then astringent. So mm-hmm. it's nice because the Turmeric, the astringency of turmeric stops bleeding. Exactly. It's a great it, wound healer. It's amazing yeah. how it works. Yeah. It always works. So um, nutmeg is astringent. Cumin is astringent. So so astringent foods are great. Uh, for They promote lightness in the body. Mm-hmm. So they're very good for kapha and pitta balancing. Uh, and they... But they aggravate vata, <laughs> so not uh, so they're not so good for vata. Usually, when I cook something astringent, I add extra olive oil or ghee or yeah. water, you know, just to counteract that, that drying effect. And that's it. There's always a way to balance it out. And it's saying, like you know, Divya just said, it's important to have all six tastes in your meals and knowing what to limit for your particular constitution. But also there's always a way to balance the ingredients. Yes, exactly. So we vary the six tastes also with the seasons. Mm-hmm. So we're still in spring. I don't know how is this in France, Colette, but <laughs> it's still changeable. Kind of still like later spring season. So mm-hmm. we 
So stringent foods are very good because it's also raining a lot, which is a lot of humidity in the air. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I'm predominantly Vata body. I enjoy astringent foods. And in this season, because we need more astringent foods in this season, I would cook a cabbage, but I would braise it, you know, with, with water, I would put it in the oven. In my new cookbook, I have this amazing recipe for braised purple cabbage. Ah, oh, it's so mm. good. And, and it's, it doesn't, it, and with the spices and everything, the method of preparation, it's cabbage, it's astringent, but it doesn't aggravate vata. Great. So you can counteract, especially as we get into the 20 qualities in next, um, there is a way to counteract the qualities of food by the, by the way you prepare it. Mm. So ju just to conclude in the six tastes, we need to include all six tastes in every meal. So you can always ask yourself, oh, do I have, what's the bitter, what's the astringent? And again, you can just add sour taste by garnishing your dish with a little bit of lime juice or lemon juice. Um, you can add astringency by adding cumin, for example, um, like that. I usually, all of my recipes are usually very balanced with the six tastes. Great. I, I consciously do that. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's really good to, to have that. And as Ayurveda recommends that you have all six tastes to, to aid digestion, to make sure it's a well-balanced meal. Yeah, and you, you're also aiding the different physiological effects uh, in that, that these six tastes promote. Mm -hmm. And also your mind is more balanced because, again, there is a mm, psychological effect for each taste as well. So, yes. you know, sometimes you eat a meal and you, your stomach is full, but you feel something is missing. <laughs> yes, exactly. We've all experienced that. And usually it could be that you're missing a taste. Mm. So think about what you ate and maybe you need something bitter. Maybe you need something astringent. And, and another tip for good digestion and also to not overeat is to end your meal with something astringent. Ah, yes. You mentioned this before. That was a great tip that you gave us. Yeah, because astringency, again, it, it, it contracts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And they kind of tell your body that's the end of the meal. So an, a, a pleasant, astringent taste for your end of meal is um, just licking a small teaspoon, very little bit of honey, like yeah. raw honey. And people are always surprised because honey most types of honey are actually predominantly astringent first and sweet second, according mm -hmm. to Ayurveda. So it's very sweet, but you will notice, especially if you're licking it, and licking is another, there are four ways to eat food. One is chewing, one is drinking, one is licking. So uh -huh. the, the licking, it promotes certain physiological response as well. And, and then the honey, it kind of, it's kind of sweet. A lot of people like to end with something sweet, mm -hmm. but it's also astringent. So it will stop your craving for more food. Yeah. And like you said, it's almost withdrawing the taste buds. Yeah. And notice yeah. the drying effect that you feel in your mouth after, after eating the honey. If you actually do it slowly, mm -hmm. you will notice that there is dryness in your mouth after eating honey. I think that's such a good tip. Really good tip for people because there a lot of people do crave a sweet at the end of the meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so honey has a scraping effect. That mm -hmm. honey is the only sweet thing that will help you lose weight. Mm. Okay, it has a scraping effect and it has it has a heating effect on the body. Eating, yeah, it's yeah. also eating. Okay. Thanks, Divya, for breaking down that and just the review of the taste is really great. So now let's move on to the gunas, which is a really interesting topic. Yeah, so you know, I, I've studied these in depth with Dr. Basvati Bhattacharya. And I mean, we spent the whole month on just studying the six tastes. <laughs> it was amazing. Fantastic. So the reason it's important to learn these again, because you will, once you know the physiological effects of each ingredient, whether it's food or herb or like that, it will be so much easier to determine what's the most balancing food for you. And it makes so much sense. It, it's so much easier to relate to food with its qualities rather than its calorie, it's like nutrition value, right? Nutrition facts. 
why is it that we can eat exactly the same food? Like you eat a piece of cake and I eat exactly the same piece of cake. And <laughs> we, we, our bodies respond completely different. Mm -hmm. You feel great and energized. You metabolize it, digest it well, and I gain weight from it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it doesn't make sense to just be stuck on the calories. You have to look at the physiological effect and then we can go deeper of how each food also affects digestion, different types of digestion. It can become more complicated like this, but just by remembering, oh, this is predominantly sweet, this will build me up. Oh, I need something sour to help me digest this heavy thing. You know, then, then it makes it so much easier to experience food in a very personal way. Exactly. Okay, so Ayurveda describes... 10 pairs of opposing qualities of food. And, and not just food, it's also like herbs and everything else. It's called guna. And guna means quality. It can also, it can mean other things also. <laughs> But in this, in this context, it means quality. And um, again, how we experience food in the first stage of digestion, usually in the stomach. So... Um, They're like heavy and light. And usually heavy and light is related to whether it's heavy or light to digest. So like, for example, yogurt is heavy to digest. Mm -hmm. And zucchini is light to digest. Mm -hmm. So it, it's heavy and not light, not in terms of weight <laughs> it's in terms of digestion and then you have like um cooling like cool, cold or hot shita or ushna is the sanskrit so it is whether it creates coldness or hotness in the body mm -hmm. so cold food cold, cold foods it's not the temperature cold food it could be temperature also when you touch it but it it The physiological effect relates to whether it contracts or expands. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have uh, something that's, and that's the Sanskrit word that even English speaking, speaking people sometimes, they're like, unctuous. What's unctuous? Mm. Snigdha. Unctuous, it means something that creates moistness in the body. It's not just oily. Sometimes it's translated. These words are hard to translate in one word in English. Yeah. It's not just oily. It's something that creates moistness as opposing to the other one, the dry, the dry, something that creates dryness in the body. So, for example, ghee creates moistness, oiliness in the body. And millet creates dryness in the body. Mm -hmm. So, and you can connect this to the taste. Usually, pungent foods increase dryness because, right, the fire dries things up. Right. Um, I mean, you want to go through all all pairs? It, um, yeah, just to yeah, we'll quickly run through them and just tell like there there are 20 gunas, but to explain to people, and we've discussed this before in the podcast that there's 10 pairs of opposites. So yes, this is why exactly. you're doing opposites for people that are not familiar. So, yeah, if you want to run through the rest of them real quick, so we'll have okay. them listed. But I also want to mention something else, is, and that's how we go deeper. You can memorize these qualities, but what does this do for you? Not yes. much. Yes. The other thing that's connected is, again, the, it's called karma, the physiological action in the body. So heavy foods... They have the, the property, the action of nourishing, expanding, growing tissues in the body. And light to digest foods do the opposite. They reduce, they diminish. Mm -hmm. So cooling foods, they kind of, uh, um, they make things firm and contract mm -hmm. and retain. And hot foods do the opposite. They expand, perspire, make things soft. And then, um, like the moist foods, they moisten, hydrate, they kind of coat your mouth, you know. Mm -hmm. And drying foods do the other way, the opposite. They dehydrate, they suck moisture out. And then we have um, 
I call it slow or like manda, <laughs> something that has a slow effect, slow quality mm. on the body. And these are usually foods that the peas, they suppress things. And then we have the opposite, something that's very sharp, um, like a chili pepper is very sharp and it will, it will kind of cut through <clears throat> issues. Or moringa, moringa is very, sharp um and then um there is a like a foods that that stop things they hold things um and they can cause constipation they usually astringent foods will do that they preserve sustain and then there there foods that will um make you have loose they release, they expand, <laughs> they can help you have loose bowel movement, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, like, like pineapple juice can do that. Exactly. Um, so then you have like soft, but it's not just soft. It's something that's soft foods. Um, they also loosen things up. Mm -hmm. So you can have a very fine powder that's also considered soft, mridu. And then uh, something that's very hard, um, hard, very hard, hardening foods, they help to tighten things up. Mm -hmm. um, and then another pair is, let's see. Yeah, you have the, the thing that's very subtle, something that has more subtle action, for example, CBD <laughs> or marijuana <laughs> You know, right or sprouts like you know sprouts, something you know, or sprouted grains. Yeah. yeah, they sp they have a very su they spread very easily and quickly in the body, and something that's more bulky or grows something that's like meat. It's very bulky. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the clear uh, structure, so something that's very clear, like water, is clear, and something that's more viscous, like like uh, something that's a little more like grimy slightly like um like aloe vera pulp <laughs> it's very yeah. or chia slimy. seeds soaked maybe yeah chia seeds yes yes um solid yeah. and the liquid well that's easy i mean some foods are solid some foods are more liquid and then we have so smooth and rough in terms of texture um and it also in terms of the action so smooth Smooth foods, they kind of seal, they have a sealing effect mm -hmm. <laughs> in the gut, for example. And um, so, for example, chia seeds can be very smooth. I mean, they have a smoothing effect. But rough, uh, rough food, foods have very scraping effect. Mm. So, and so rough would be like raw foods. Yeah, rough could also be raw foods. Yeah, but cooked millet is very rough. It, mm. It's it scrapes things away in, in the gut, which can be great, but if you eat too much millet, it starts to scrape the lining of the gut. Mm. So it has this scraping property. Right. Uh, it okay. could be in terms of fiber also. Yeah. So you can go in several different directions, but yeah, these are the 20, 20, uh, 10, 10 opposing qualities. And again, always connect to what you need right now. Mm -hmm. And then feel the food. And if you want to go a little deeper, study the actions, the physiological actions. See, for like a lot of Ayurveda teachers, they recommend with food to just go with the top three, which are heavy and light to digest, uh, cold or hot in the body, and then moist or dry. Uh, the other pairs, of course, relate to food, but but they are very important to consider, especially when you consider remedies, like Ayurvedic herbal remedies. You have to consider all the other actions. But with with food, so you don't get overwhelmed when you're planning your meal, you can just go with the top three. Okay, so heavy and light, cool and hot and moist and dry. Yes. I'm going to jump in here. This is great information that Divya is giving us here. 
However, I'm a little concerned for those of you who are new to Ayurveda and starting out your journey that it can get a little bit overwhelming. And if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all this information, well, I want to let you know that I can support you if you're looking for some support in a couple of different ways. First, there's my one-to-one online consultations where I can determine your birth constitution, if you have a current imbalance, and then also tailor this information. So weed out all the information that you don't need and tailor it specifically to you. So telling you your typical signs of imbalance and what tastes and qualities are best for your constitution and if you have a current imbalance going on. So that's one option. The second option, if you want to dive a little deeper into the gunas, the 10 pairs of opposites that we just discussed into the circadian rhythms, into the qualities of the mind and into this journey of self-realization and tapping into your intuition and having more awareness about your body. Well, then you might be interested in my online 28-day self-paced program called the Daily Habits for a Holistic Health program and that you can start at any time. And that consists of a daily video. Of course, you can take as long as you want with each video, but they're about 10 minutes. And the idea in this program is to educate you and to create more awareness in your body so you can become more confident in making decisions with your food, with your lifestyle, and so on to keep your body and mind in balance. So to check out the one-to-one consultations and that Daily Habits for Holistic Health program, Just visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com, and you can also find the link in the show notes. Okay, let's go back to my conversation with Divya. Yeah, and it is interesting to have, to play around with this a little bit and, and also to think, as we recommend in Ayurveda, be aware of the qualities in your body in the morning when you're getting going and hopefully you're doing some mindfulness practices first thing and taking some time to check in about how you're feeling that day. You know, you're having morning yes. bowel movement. How was your bowel movement? How am I feeling? Am I feeling more restless in the mind or am I feeling more heavy and foggy in the mind or in the body? And just tuning in to what you need and then using that knowledge and then bringing in the opposite qualities. Exactly, yes. And then again, when you cook, and that's the beauty of cooking is that you change the qualities when you cook. For example, Lentils and beans are very dry because they're predominantly astringent. They have the earth quality, but they have the air space quality. So they produce dryness in the body. And the bigger the bean, the more dryness it produces. That's why Vadim Mishra always said, don't don't use large beans if you have weak digestion because they will dry you up. They will constipate you more. They they will clog you. You will not digest them fully. Right. So this would be good for somebody who has maybe diarrhea or a lot of loose stool. Yeah, exactly. That rice with beans. Yeah. And they also lower fever. All lentils and beans have the property of lowering fever, high fever. But so how do we, we don't just eat the beans dry, right? We soak them, adding water element, moistness. We, we cook them with heat. So we add heating property. We, We add some kind of fat. I mean, even just, if you just eat just cooked beans, like drained cooked beans, they're so drying, they kind of stop in your throat, you know? Yeah, yeah. Choke you a little bit. So when you add fat, the snigdha, the moist, oily quality, then you balance them that way. And then you add some pungency, like ginger, cumin, or black pepper, These spices will help you digest them better. So you're adding heat to them. That's why cooking is so important because it helps when you do it the right way, the Ayurvedic way, it helps to balance the qualities. Mm, Exactly. So I think, Divya, to help people out, um, can can I give you a few examples of, say, I just woke up in the morning and I'm feeling this way? What meal would you suggest or what types of meal would you suggest for that day okay okay so I think this will be good because it can be hard when we're talking in the qualities and if people are not used to them so for example I just woke up and the weather right now has been very windy and stormy and I notice I'm feeling a little unsettled I'm feeling my mind was is restless it's racing a lot 
my skin is really dry and my bowel movements have been irregular lately with all this windy weather. So what would you suggest for that day? So I have dryness okay. in the skin, dryness in the bowel movements, and my mind has just been really restless and I'm feeling a little on edge. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm going to give you a hug. Yes. <laughs> you, need, you need some hugs. You need some extra hugs. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the the golden rule of balance is that we all balance with the opposite quality, right? Mm -hmm. So you need something warm and grounding, something moist, something sweet. Sweet in the it could be sweet in taste, like adding a sweetener, but something that's very heavier and grounding. So an oatmeal, if you like oatmeal, you can mm -hmm. have like a hot oatmeal. Add some dates or some raisins. Add some spices like cinnamon and cardamom. Like make it a little bit of ghee. Oh, ghee will be so good with this oatmeal. And and just eat it slowly. Mm. Or have a soup. Have a really nice vegetable soup. You could add a little bit of mung dao or red lentils to it. Something that's moist and heavier and and warm. Right, and maybe some root vegetables with that grounding quality as well. In the yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you need a food hug also. I do need a food hug. Okay, so <laughs> we want grounding foods to counter that kind of restlessness I'm feeling. We want good fats because I'm yeah. feeling dry, and <laughs> and like the soup is going to rehydrate me as well. And grounding ingredients. My food should be substantial. Basically, I don't want a rice cake right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Can I no, give you two you more? You could have hot rice. You could have no rice cake, but you could have hot. Yes, rice. rice. But maybe some ghee stirred in. Oh, yes. Perfect, right? Okay. Can I give you a couple more examples? Okay. All right. So, yeah, it's summertime. I'm really feeling hot. It's really humid and hot, and I'm feeling a little irritable. I feel like I can't really control my frustration right now. I feel like it's just under the under the skin. And I'm also having um, a lot of loose bowel movements at the moment. And yeah, just feeling hot and irritable and everything feels a little aggravated. Yeah. Um, you need to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> so... Again, what would be the opposite? We need some cooling foods, calming foods also. So it's not just cooling, but calming. You don't want to overstimulate yourself with foods that, that like onion, something that has a lot of onions and garlic because they're overly stimulated or something that has a lot of chili because you're already overly stimulated. Mm. So you need something that's calming. So, um, I would recommend, well, uh, you could have some quinoa mm -hmm. or some rice to help with the loose bowel movements because mm -hmm. they have a holding property. These grains have a little bit of a holding property. And then eat some light cooked vegetables, but maybe just steamed, like steamed vegetables, like zucchini, um, fennel, leafy greens. So that is in, in, in season artichokes you know like this this will kind of calm you down you could make a creamy soup mm -hmm. also with these vegetables something to just calm you down but not overstimulate you right. and um would a bitter if, taste be good here yeah something bitter like fine i mean again leafy greens are bitter mm. if you like bitter melon go for it mm. so but but also you could have a salad because mm, my digestive uh, fire is pretty strong. Yeah, right. So yeah, but make sure that you add a little bit of olive oil to it because that will you don't want to aggravate your vata also right. or your airiness while you're eating the salad. So make a nice dressing with olive oil. Yeah, uh, and some cooling some foods. I definitely yeah. Cooling. Yeah, maybe some sun. I love sunflower dressing. I have a sunflower dressing in my new cookbook. So that will cool you down. Something with cilantro. Mm. Um, something with coconut. Coconut yeah. is so nourishing and so calming. Like in my first cookbook, What to Eat, there is this very nice coconut papaya smoothie. 
-hmm. And although papaya can have heating effect, the coconut balances that out. So, it, mm. or in my second book, Joy of Balance, I have this really nice coconut lavender shake, mm. and it's so nourishing. That so but it's, so that's it's cooling and calming. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that'd be perfect for me right now. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> great. Okay, I have one last example. Okay, so I'm in Ireland. It's raining a lot. Everything is very heavy and I'm feeling heavy and sluggish. I woke up feeling a bit congested. I'm feeling my mind is a little bit foggy and I just feel so lethargic. Like I just have no motivation. What should I eat? Yeah, that's really frustrating when you feel that way. So you need a little bit of a kick. <laughs> <laughs> no hogs this time. <laughs> so that's so you here you need something stimulated, so stimulating. So go for the ginger and the chilies, and if you enjoy onions and garlic, eat a little bit of it. You know, like you need those pungent, stimulating foods. I I love ginger tea. You know, ginger tea is just it's so it, it just works so quickly when you feel kind of ah, mm. when you feel kind of stuck and sluggish um, but in terms of food so you want to eat lighter foods mm. that are nourishing so go for all these stringent foods that we spoke like cabbage can super different types of cabbage they're very nutritious but they're very light um, broccoli cauliflower like all these vegetables the light grain like quinoa or millet mm -hmm. will work so i want with. the light yeah, the light drying grain. Yes, mm. yeah. The only rice that will not create too much heaviness in the body is red rice. Mm. So red rice does not increase kapha. It's mm. kind of tridoshic. Okay. But um, so if you f if you feel like rice, you could have some red rice. But the yeah, just go for the light the bit, something bitter. Uh, like again, leafy greens are great. So you need pungent, bitter, and astringent foods. Yeah, and, and warm as well. Warm, definitely yeah, warm. Yeah. Okay. So again, it's not just what you favor, it's also what you avoid. So don't go for the cookies and the yeah. <laughs> no comfort foods, no heavy, stodgy. Yes, because that will increase your heaviness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for that advice. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's good to give those examples because it can be hard to think, but just giving those, going through those few examples there really helps. Um, I think just kind of put it into practice for people to understand what are we saying when, you know, create awareness in the morning about how you're feeling and, and you really can start simple. I feel heavy today, so I need to eat lighter foods. I feel mm -hmm. overheated today, so I need to eat more cooling foods and so on. Yeah, exactly. So don't eat the same thing every day. So some people eat oatmeal every single day of the year. And, and, I, I, and I tell them, you know, you don't need to eat oatmeal every day. You just If you feel oatmeal is great when you need something heavier, because oats are quite heavy. They have a lot of protein also. But let's say you need something lighter, make quinoa flakes. Exactly. So much lighter. Mm. Mm. Very good point. Great. Okay, so where to next? Okay, so the next category, the third category, that's, that's going to be faster because it's, it's called virya. So virya, the modern translation is potency of food. And the teachers that I study Ayurveda with, they, they said, yeah, but potency is not exact translation. So I translate it in my books as metabolic effect mm. in the sense that that's the virya is the potency that the food has to create a metabolic response, whether it heats your body or it cools, cools it down. So some foods... It, it's not temperature, heating and cooling, metabolic effects. So you can eat hot food, like you can eat a hot zucchini creamy soup with coconut milk. It's hot in temperature, but it will cool down your body. Mm. It will promote coolness in your body. <laughs> and, and you can have a cold in temperature tomato salad with some raw onions and things. And these are very heating foods. It's cold in temperature, but you start sweating. You feel hot after you eat it. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So 
I love, I use this all the time because a lot of people, so we experience this also in the liver. I remember Vadim Mishir, the first time he checked my pulse, he was like, wow, your liver is so hot. And I'm like, what do you mean my liver is hot? <laughs> it's because there is the liver is a hot organ by nature. It does a lot of work, it's constantly working to transform things. It's a str- organ of transformation and purific- purifies everything. But um, so it's a hot organ. And if you eat a lot of hot foods, it can overheat you. It, it can become even more hot. And you know, hot liver when somebody explodes emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it could be coming from the liver. People say the liver is the seat of anger, mm-hmm. it's a hot emotion. Mm. So, but also a lot of heat in the liver. So, a lot of heating, eating foods that have this heating metabolic effect. It, the heat can come up on your skin as eczema or other hot uh, hot issues with the skin. It can come up on your eyes, so you get these hot, dry, itchy eyes. It can come up emotionally. So, uh, yeah, so depending on how you feel, whether you feel you need to heat up or cool down your body, you want to consider... Uh, this particular property of food. Okay. And so let's give some examples of heating foods. So, for example, red meat is very heating. Mm-hmm. Any kind of seafood is very heating. Um, and we mentioned a lot of pungent foods. Uh, a lot of foods that are pungent in taste are very heating, like onions and garlic, very heating Ginger, ginger is interesting, it's heating, but its next property, the post-digestive taste is sweet. So it's, it's not as heating as chilies, for example. <laughs> right, right. And then I guess nightshades will be very heating. Yeah, nightshades are usually heating. And anything, so usually foods that are pungent, sour and salty would have heating effects, they are metabolic effect. There are exceptions, but that's the general the general because they have the fire element in them right so so anything that's sour acidic will increase heat in the body Mm -hmm. except for lime juice lime juice is lime is actually cooling it's sour but it's cooling Mm -hmm. right as Um, opposed to um lemon lemon. yeah lemon is heating lemon is more sharp and more acidic that's why body mission would often told us you know your liver is too hot just use lime juice instead of lemon juice Mm -hmm. right and then cooling foods would be all the summer squashes uh coconut is very cooling fennel cilantro is very cooling um, mint. rose, mint. Yeah, mint in small quantities is cooling. There are different types of mint also. Mm-hmm. Um, um, a lot of grains like rice is cooling, aloe vera, lavender. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a lot of heating spices like flax seeds, for example. They're a seed. They're very heating. Mm-hmm. And they can really overheat your spleen. That's why in Ayurveda we're in Shakavansia Ayurveda <laughs> that I, I'm part of, we recommend using flax, seed, or oil only medicinally. Like it has to be prescribed to you. Don't just use it in your food so much because it can overheat your liver and your spleen. Mm-hmm. Chocolate is heating. I'm sorry, guys. Chocolate is heating. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cacao. Yeah, and it's this very acidic, also very drying. It has a very dry... It pr- it increases dryness in the body. Mm-hmm. That's the guna, the quality. Um, mustard seeds are very heating. You know, like a lot of people like to use mustard seeds. I don't use them in the summer so much because I rarely use them actually. But if you grind mustard seeds and put them on your tongue, you'll notice that they're much more sharp, pungent than chili pepper. <laughs> right. Um of course, chili, chili, the different, different chilies have different levels of pungency, but in general, mustard seeds are extremely heating. All right. So the next category is called vipaka in, 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 uh, in Sanskrit. Paka means to cook. 
And vipaka is like the post-digestive effect. So the way we experience food in the body in this final stage of digestion. So uh, the six tastes transform into three tastes, sweet, sour, and pungent. So usually for cooking, we don't, if we don't pay so much attention to the vipaka, I mean, it's important also f- on some levels for food combining, like food compatibility. But for the home cook, just don't worry so much about the vipaka. Vipaka is also, when you prepare your food, I mean, it, if you just go with the taste, the qualities, and the metabolic effect, you will be pretty balanced. Yeah. So vipaka is very much important to consider for practitioners when they prescribe certain recipes, food recipes, or certain herbal remedies. Mm-hmm. But it's so fascinating because you cannot really taste the three tastes. They are all the way in your, the end of small intestine and large intestine. You can't, you cannot test this, but they were able to speak about post-digestive effect, how the food affects us after the initial stages of digestion. Somehow the stages of Ayurveda figured that out. Yeah, it is amazing. And just to list it for people real quick, like the, so the sweet and salty, the VPAC or the post-digestive effect is sweet, right? Yes, and sour there are stays sour. But, but usually yes. Sour yeah. remains sour, and bitter, pungent, and astringent tra- transform into pungent. Okay, but, so yeah, like ex- you said, for the home cook, that's a bit too far <laughs> and, and too much. And so just be concerned with the other elements that we talked about and the qualities, because yeah, exactly. that, that can get it way too confusing for people, I think. Yeah, for the home cook, is just... It's just a way to appreciate the depth of Ayurveda. Exactly. Like, wow. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it is amazing that they figured this out thousands of years ago. Yes. So then the final one, a final of the five categories of properties of foods is, is called Prabhava, or the unique, inexplicable healing property. So when you say that food is good for something, Especially, but you cannot explain why. <laughs> like, for example, or an herb, like rose is good for the heart. Mm-hmm. When you break down the chemical components, there is nothing that really helps the heart, but it kind of supports the emotional heart. Or Arjuna. Arjuna is a, it's a bark it's of a tree, and it's used as a remedy that really strengthens the heart, but nobody can explain why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But it's a very famous remedy for strengthening the functions of the heart, the physical heart. Um, so, so that's the so that's like after you've digested the food, assimilated its nutrients, eliminated the waste, utilized the food's energy. It usually takes like twenty-seven to thirty days from the day you eat for all these processes to happen. So. After that an inexplicable property of food is called prabhava. Now, not every food and herb has a prabhava in the sense that every food or herb has healing properties, but some of them are all explained. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about the, inex- the unexplainable, the inexplicable properties here. Mm. Um, that's prabhava. That's the unique healing property. Yes, so these are the five properties. I hope it wasn't too confusing, but again, it it gives you a different perspective on food in terms of its qualities rather than its caloric quantities. Divya, thank you so much. This was great information, really helpful. And I think given the examples and you breaking it down so much is going to really help people understand it a lot more. Well, Divya, thanks again. And before we finish up, can you tell people again the about your new book real quick and where they can find out all the information about what you have going on? Because you have lots going on. Yes, thank you. My new book is called Joy of Balance, an Ayurvedic Guide to Cooking with Healing Ingredients. It will be released by Ritsali on September 6th. But you can go ahead and pre-order it. Um, it's available on many uh, 
online stores, so including Europe and Canada. So go ahead and pre-order it. You will be among the first one to receive it. It's a wonderful book that will help you cook, learn more about the properties of the ingredients so that you know when to cook it, when not to cook it or eat it. And it will also help you understand a little bit more about your meal portions, about um, food compatibility. I give these food compatibility charts at the end. It, and, and a lot of new spice blends and, of course, 80 delicious plant-based recipes. Wow. Fantastic. Very exciting. Well, congratulations. I know it was a, you know, a lot of work um, and it's all going to pay off now with this wonderful book. I hope so. I hope I hope you guys will enjoy it. And you just did a rebranding? For yes, we rebranded. Our brand is Devious because we have so many things going on. So Devious Kitchen, our restaurant is one of them. We have beautiful new package, packaging for our retail products. And now we also released all of our kitchery and we have a new soup product. So we have two soups now. Uh, we all have them also in single size serving, single serving size. So um, smaller package mixed with the proper spices. So it, it makes it much easier when you just cook for one person. Mm. Great. Wonderful. And I will put the links to Divya's Kitchen and Bhagavad Life where you do your online teaching cooking classes in the show notes. Divya, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you, Colette. Always a pleasure speaking with you. All right, my dear. Take good care of yourself. Until next time. Bye for now. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Divi, and please check out the show notes for all the links mentioned. If you think that this episode will be helpful to family or friends, please share it with them. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed the podcast, please do so. So the new episodes will automatically download for you. And if you would like to rate and review the podcast, I would really appreciate that because it really helps others find this wonderful wisdom of Ayurveda. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Be well and bye for now. Slong of all.